Welcome to the Puberty Prof Podcast, where information and tools are shared to help you have conversations about puberty and other growing up topics. Here is your host, Lori Reichel, the Puberty Prof, a nationally recognized health educator, author of the award-winning book, Common Questions Children Ask About Puberty, and creator of the Talk Puberty app. And welcome to the Puberty Prof Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Lori Reichel, the Puberty Prof. And this episode is the trivia game for the fall series of 2022. Basically, what happens for every series of the podcast is that there are a total of 13 episodes that go into a series, and they end with a trivia game. So if you started listening in January of 2021, you will note that This is the sixth trivia game, and it will cover the information that was shared in episodes 66 to 77. Those episodes are the ones that were part of the fall series. And how this will work is I will state a statement or question in a multiple choice or true false format, and you get to guess what the correct answer is. I will say each statement slash question two times and then I'll pause before I explain the correct answer. So let's start. And even before I start, let me remember though, to remind you that if you want to watch this game, this trivia game for the fall 2022 series, if you want to watch it, you can go to the YouTube channel and I'll make sure that there's a link in today's description for this episode. So question number one, the NSES stands for A, the National Sexuality Education Standards, B, the National Health Education Standards, C, the Not-So-Exact Sexuality Standards, or D, all are correct. The NSES stands for A, the National Sexuality Education Standards, B, the National Health Education Standards, C, the Not-So-Exact Sexuality Standards, or D, all are correct. And the correct answer is dun, da, 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 A, the National Sexuality Education Standards. And these standards are what the fall series was based on. In episodes 66, excuse me, in episode 66, which was titled Tools to Understand What is Age and Developmentally Appropriate Sex Ed, Nora Gelperin joined me to talk about how these standards were created. So if you want to have some background to them, listen to episode 66. As a reminder, episodes 67 to 68 uh, are covering information found from those standards, and that includes this trivia game. Question two, providing consent starts during the teen years. Providing consent starts during the teen years. True or false? And the correct answer is false. I had Megan Conklin join. She is a community health educator. And she shared with us, like she read the the statements that are under consent and healthy relationships up to grades five for the standards. And what's noted is even for younger people, even before they reach the K through 12 setting, we can start talking to young people about what consent is. Now, typically when we hear that word, we think about those sexual decisions for older people, but no, for consent, it it goes to even things about sharing toys or, or giving a hug to someone. So think about it. If we equip young people with the skills to tell us that they don't feel comfortable to hug someone, that's equipping them with those tools to have also later on in their life when they're in more sensitive perhaps or more intimate situations with a partner and they feel more comfortable saying no to things. 
So consent is something that we teach even to younger people and we support throughout everybody's life. Question three, people of all ages can be taught how to stand up for others even in situations where there are many people present, true or false. People of all ages can be taught how to stand up for others even in situations where there are many people present, true or false. And the correct answer is true. Mike Domitz, Domitz, sorry, Mike. Uh, he is the founder of the Center for Respect. He reminded me actually that even though if there's a lot of people present, if you really care for others, you're able to stand up for them, even in challenging situations. I was wrong and he corrected me when we were talking with one another in episode 68, because I had said, isn't there something about the bystander effect and the more people that are present, the less likely somebody is going to help someone. And he corrected me to say, no, Lori, think about it. That if you care for a person, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter how many people are present. So it's about teaching people how to care, not about how many people are present. So I really appreciated that he gave me that perspective. Question four, there are only two variations of people's human reproductive systems, true or false. There are only two variations of people's human reproductive systems, true or false. And the correct answer is, False. I know that some of us think of what we learned in science class, that there's the female reproductive system and the male reproductive system. Yet, it's really nice to know that in the year 2022, we acknowledge that not everybody is born the same way. There are some people that are born with one testicle. There are some people that are born with other body parts or combined parts. And in episode 69, Tess Vanderhaeg actually talked about that, that you know everybody's bodies are different. We have some similarities, but we attempt to support that when we teach young people about the reproductive systems, we say like, this is parts that most people have or most boys have. Like we're trying to be more inclusive because there are variations. Question five. What are some puberty concepts recommended to be taught to young people up to grade five? A, how puberty prepares people for the potential for reproduction. B, how to maintain one's personal hygiene. C, the role of hormones in human sexual development. Or D, all hormone, or excuse me, all answers are correct. Let me say that again. What are some puberty concepts recommended to be taught to young people up to grade five? A, how puberty prepares people for the potential for reproduction. B, how to maintain one's personal hygiene. C, the role of hormones in human sexual development. And D, all answers are correct. And the correct answer is D, they're all correct. And I actually went over that in episode 70, because I am the puberty prof. And some of the basics of what we do teach young people is that people, um, that puberty prepares people for reproduction. Like our bodies start going through these changes that if one day we choose to and are able to, we can reproduce. Uh, that's a lot of children even ask, why do I have to go through this? And it's basically, we are, we go through these pubertal changes to become more adult-like. And that includes those reproductive parts. The aspect about maintaining hygienic uh, habits, how to do that? Yes, that's another thing we go over because as our bodies are changing, as well as our emotions, uh, are a little different and mentally we're growing at all. We need to note that we're becoming more independent and we also have more hygienic needs. For example, dealing with more body odor. odor. And then regarding the whole 
role of hormones, we do talk about that with young people. And what I like to share with them is that, you know, sometimes when we get moody, that is because of hormones. Sometimes the hormones are released and we, it's, it's challenging because it's such a, a higher level of hormones that are released during puberty for those changes. So again, we do cover all these concepts for young people when we're teaching them about puberty and other growing up topics. That's what's recommended. Question six, what is one of the heads of the three-headed monster Dr. Simmons Schneider referred to regarding brain development? A, anxiety, B, anger, or C, stress, D, all are correct, E, none are correct. What is one of the heads of the three-headed monster Dr. Simmons Schneider referred to regarding brain development? A, anxiety, B, anger, C, stress, D, all are correct, or E, none are correct. And the correct answer is D, all are correct. And Dr. Gina Simmons, she was on episode 71 to talk about how during puberty, we sometimes think it's other body parts that are changing, yet it also includes the brain. The brain is going through this rapid growth in which it's not totally done with its growth process until about ages 24 to 25, although cells are continuously you know, growing throughout our body. But she reminded us that during this time of these pubertal years, that young people need to be provided with tools to help deal with anxiety, anger, and stress. I mean, their bodies are changing, they're getting more responsible. So these feelings are part of our lives and we need to equip them with tools for coping. Question seven, gender identity and sex assigned at birth are the same thing, true or false? Gender identity and sex assigned at birth are the same thing, true or false? And the correct answer is false. On episode 72, Carrie Burton went over a variety of terminology, some things that I still am confused about at times because I don't identify in certain ways. So it would make sense I might get confused. And we talked about how the sex assigned at birth is basically how you're told or like when you're born, like people look at your body parts and they're like, oh, your body parts that look like a girl or a boy. So that's the sex assigned at birth. That's the um, how you you your bi biology at birth. And then gender identity is about how you identify as a male or female or on a spectrum. So they are two different things. Question eight. Teaching children to identify trusted adults for talking about basic sexuality concepts, including sexual orientation, is one skill noted in the National Sexuality Education Standards. True or false? Teaching children to identify trusted adults for talking about basic sexuality concepts, including sexual orientation, is one skill noted in the NSES. True or false? And the correct answer is true. Thanks to Gina Lepore, she was on episode 73. She talked about the need for us to help young people identify those trusted adults in their lives. Gina, who works for ETR, uh, ETR is a resource for a lot of health education experts. Uh, but she reminded us about, you know, like parents and other caretakers are some of those trusted adults for young people to go to. So if you're a parent or caretaker, we, we want you to be able to talk with your children about these topics. Question nine, elementary school age children are often curious about where babies come from. True or false? Elementary school age children are, are often curious about where babies come from. True or false? And the correct answer is 
True. Basically, that's reproduction basics. And as Miss Anita Sheffer, she's a returning guest to the Puberty Prof podcast, as she explained in episode 74, that yes, younger children usually are curious about where babies come from. She has two daughters. And if I recall correctly, she did share with me that, yeah, they were curious about it because it, it is like, how did that baby get in there? It's one of those natural curiosities. And some science lessons in elementary school go, th go through reproduction. So they don't go through the the step by step for what people do, but it's more about there's a part from uh, somebody that has an ovary or ovaries and then a part that comes from somebody that has a testicle or testicles. Question 10, which skill is recommended we teach to young people to help them stay well? A, washing their hands for 10 seconds. B, washing their hands for a full verse of the happy birthday song. Happy birthday to you. C, turning the water off with your clean hands, or D, all answers are correct. Which skill is recommended we teach to young people to help them stay well? A, washing their hands for 10 seconds. B, washing their hands for a full verse of the happy birthday song. C, turning the water off with their clean hands, or D, all answers are correct. And the correct answer is B, as in Bob. So what we teach young people is when they're washing their hands with soap and water is they sing, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. Maybe I'm singing that to my brother, Bob, although it's not his birthday this month. But uh, we teach children to wash their hands for that full verse of singing that song. Uh, it's not 10 seconds, it's longer than that. And regarding how we turn off water, we teach young people to either turn off the water with their elbow or with a towel that dried our hands. When we wash our hands and then turn off the water with our clean hands, we're actually putting germs back on them. So something that I do in a public restroom is after I wash my hands, I get the the towel. If the water is still on, I, I turn off the water with the towel. I also use that towel to open up the door so I can leave the room. So I try to not to have any contact with doors and faucets while I'm in the bathroom. The person that helped explain that was Dr. Smalls Minte. She is a specialist with, uh, she's a doctor. She has all these different degrees and she talked about hygiene and vaccines. And she also wrote the book, Angela the Brave, all about vaccines. Question 11, although the topic may seem challenging, trusted adults need to talk with young people about sexual abuse and what they can do if this happens, true or false. Although the topic may seem challenging, trusted adults need to talk with young people about sexual abuse and what they can do if this happens, true or false. And the correct answer is true. As doc, Dr. Palfi explained, that we do need to talk to young people about interpersonal violence. Dr. Palfi was on the podcast about a year ago, and she talked about the grooming techniques some people use to, to partake in sexual abuse of young people, and that we need to equip children with information and skills to make them aware of this. She is the author of the book, Men Too, as well as a series of books, including The Unsafe Neighbor. That book was just released this, uh, this fall. And I really appreciate how she talks about a tough topic in a very caring and like a way that shows that she cares for kids, that's for sure. So next question, 12. According to Mr. Sean and Rodney, empathy is a feeling that A, helps others feel heard and understood, B, can be shown by people of all ages, C, Rodney has felt from trusted adults in his life, 
and D, all are correct. According to Mr. Sean and Rodney, empathy is a feeling that A, helps others feel heard and understood, B, can be shown by people of all ages, C, Rodney has felt from trusted adults in his life, or D, all are correct. Now, if you haven't listened to this episode, please do, yet watch it too on my YouTube channel. I appreciate all of my guests. I have learned so much from every single one of them. I do have, though, a special place in my heart for episode 77 because Rodney was with Mr. Sean and Rodney is a puppet. And I just had a really fun time talking with him. And Rodney did say that he did feel empathy when he talked to a trusted adult about something that happened in his life. Empathy is also something that helps others feel heard slash understood and can be shown by people of all ages. We can teach this to young people about how to be empathetic. So all answers are correct for answer 12. And if you're wondering, isn't empathy and sympathy the same thing? No, empathy is really just sometimes saying to someone, oh, I don't even know what to say. That seems really hard or challenging. I'm so sorry. And being with them. Last but not least is question number 13. I have 13 questions in all these trivia games because 13 is such a great age in my eyes. I love talking to young people about all those changes and a lot of them occur before age 13 and they're being experienced definitely by at that time. So question 13 is, Items that help parents and other caregivers talk with young people about puberty and other age appropriate topics are A, the Talk Puberty app, B, the book titled Common Questions Children Ask About Puberty, C, the Puberty Chit Chat Cards, or D, all are correct. Items that help parents and other caregivers talk with young people about puberty and other age appropriate topics are A, the Talk Puberty app, B, the book titled Common Questions Children Ask About Puberty, C, the Puberty Chit Chat Cards, or D, all are correct. And the correct answer is D, all are correct. So the Talk Puberty app, app that's T-A-L-K, that is an app that I created with the help of my tech expert. And it is, it's basically questions. They're put into categories and a parent or other caretaker can sit with a child and go through questions. And in most sections, a simple age appropriate answer is provided. So children can even make fun of the questions if they want to, I'm fine with that. Yet the app is a cue to action to help people talk. There's a slight charge to download it, so upon using the app, you're not interrupted and nothing inappropriate appears. I would never want that to happen. So that's the Talk Puberty app, T-A-L-K, Puberty app. The book, Common Questions Children Ask About Puberty, was created from when I collected all these questions that children have asked me in the past about puberty and other growing up topics. So I put them together in a book and this book has won the Mom's Choice Award as well as two other awards. And the questions are there as well as age appropriate answers. And the back of the book is the puberty chit chat cards. And you can also purchase those at my website, pubertyprof dot com. They're handheld cards that allow young people to answer questions. Actually, a whole family can sit down and talk about the cards. So I, I love them. I even show them to my college students because they, they do something about helping people talk about topics. So I put a slide up here about the Talk Puberty app because I my, one of my passions in life is to provide tools to help people have these conversations. So whatever I can do to help you out, I will seek to do that. 
And that concludes the trivia game for the fall series of 2022. I thank you so much for listening in. I hope that you learned or remembered something. And if you have any comments or any ideas for upcoming episodes, because the episodes will be back in mid-January of 2023, if you have ideas or suggestions or even questions, feel free to email me at pubertyprof at gmail.com or go to my website, pubertyprof.com and fill out the comment box there. So thanks again for listening in and I hope you have a happy and healthy day. Thank you for listening to the Puberty Prof Podcast where information and tools are shared to help you have conversations about puberty and other growing up topics. Did you enjoy this episode? Please like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. You can also follow The Puberty Prof on Twitter or Instagram. The Puberty Prof, Lori Reichel, wants to hear from you. Go to pubertyprof.com or click on the link in this episode's description. There you can find more information, as well as ask questions to be answered by the Puberty Prof in a future episode. That's pubertyprof.com. Also, remember to check out the Talk Puberty app and the book, Common Questions Children Ask About Puberty. Until next time, this is the Puberty Prof Podcast, where information and tools are shared to help you have conversations about puberty and other growing up topics.